All right, folks, so I wanted to talk a little bit about this used power supply that I picked up. I think I got a pretty good deal on it. I paid 150 bucks. These things are significantly more expensive than that. But uh, it does have some damage to it, right? Like you can see right here, this is the case is dented in and one of the fins on the heat sink is bent. But um, this is a VS, which means that it has a variable supply. So I can control the output voltage and I can control the amps. Not all these Astron power supplies have that, but that is a feature that I wanted because I will use this as a desktop power supply, not just uh, potentially for amateur radio. It should put out a constant voltage of 3.8, which is what we need for amateur radio, but I may want to change that for whatever reason. It's a VS35M, which means it's a 35 amp power supply. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means. That is its max load. Um, obviously, when you run continuous, you want to do that at a little bit lower uh, rate. And this is saying 25 at a 50% duty cycle. Well, I don't know how well that's going to play into me using this for digital modes, but we'll find out. Um, VS35M, the M means that it has these meters. So not all these Astron supplies have the variable controls or the meters. Uh, this is a little bit older. I'm not sure how old it is. I'm actually going to call Astron and give them the serial number to see if I can figure out when it was produced. But I paid about 150 bucks for this, and I feel that's worth it. Um, this is a linear power supply, and, and there's many, many TAMs given testimony that these are fantastic clean power supplies that have been in service for decades in some cases. So I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, I want to plug it in, and I want to run it through some tests. We're going to crack it open, look at the inside, and see uh, what it looks like. Um, but one of the things is, is that here is the power supply cord. Now, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, knowing that this was going to be bent like that, I suppose I could bend it down. But what I don't know is if I've messed with the connection in here at all. So when I look at this, this looks like it extends a little bit out further than it should. So this may be a problem. And uh, let me roll in a picture now and you can see from the back of the unit that this is not an easily swappable um, power cord. Now it's something that I'm sure that I could do. Uh, potentially you could even cut it off right here and just put a new end on it. I'm not sure what we're going to do, but uh, we'll figure it out as we go along. So let's go ahead and uh, get a closer look at this and crack the case open and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so we have this connected to a multimeter and we are all plugged in and we're going to see what happens here when I turn it on. So let's just go ahead and flip this button on. I was able to straighten the plug up and, and get it plugged in. And so right now it's reading 7.6 volts. And uh, that seems to be accurate from looking at the front of the scale. Um, one of the things I'm going to mention real quick is, is that these meters are not lit. And some models have lit meters, some models don't. I don't know which is newer or which isn't, but uh, I can live with this. It's supposed to go from 2 to 16 volts, I believe. So if I turn this all the way down, we're at about 1.5. And... Let's just go ahead and keep turning this up. So this is about where I want to operate it. Now, obviously, we're going to get some voltage sag or drop when we put a load on this. And we'll go ahead and we're going to test that out as well. But uh, if I turn it all the way up, we get 14.8. Uh, and I wasn't able to find a manual anywhere, so maybe maybe this is the range on it. I don't know. I thought it was 2 to 16, but um, if this can hold out at this voltage, I think we're going to be okay. So I did want to check that. Now, I'm not putting any load on here, so the amps are not going to move or adjust. But like I said, 13.8, so let me get this close to where we want to be, is... Uh, is what I'm looking for. So that's a good sign. We know that it's producing voltage on the outputs. Okay, I just want to take a little bit of a look. This thing is a tank and it weighs like 40 pounds. It is uh, super duper heavy. I showed you some of the dings on the front of it. It's got some dings and some wear on the top. Not so much of a big deal. And then here you can see that this fin is bent in a little bit. Um, I could try to bend that out and I don't think I'm going to. It's not entirely clean, it's a little dirty. And um, I wanted to point out a little bit of a challenge with this. So hopefully you can see the back of it and it's a little dirty. Here it has the four transistors and these things get hot. These are kind of like your final transistors and um, 
they're attached directly to this heat sink, which is good. You can see that there's some thermal paste oozing out from these. I don't know if these have been replaced or not. Um, given the potential age for this, uh, this could be have had a lot of repairs or even mods done on it. So we're going to open it up to see what it looks like. But what I wanted to point out were these terminals on the back. Now, typically with terminals like this, I like to see a piece of plastic in between these so that something doesn't become disconnected, fall down, and cause a short. The other one is, is that with these exposed like this, you run the potential risk of these bumping into something or something falling across those and creating a little bit of a short. Um, here on the back, it says it's got a 3AG 8-amp fuse, and that would work. Uh, this is your AC fuse, um, or it wouldn't have powered on. But I uh, just wanted to show that off. This thing is built like a tank. So let me go ahead, and uh, we're going to crack this open. We're going to take a little bit of a peek inside and see what's doing. Okay, getting the case off wasn't that easy. It had uh, three screws in the top and four in the bottom. And it really wasn't that bad. The screws looked like they were in pretty good condition. Two of them looked like they had been potentially replaced because they were partly stripped out. But uh, here is the inside of the power supply. Now, one of the things that I want to just immediately talk about is this giant capacitor here. It is a big capacitor. And these things can hold or store energy when the device is not even plugged in or powered up. It's kind of like a battery. So... When you're poking around in this, you want to make sure that you're very careful and you want to bleed this capacitor off to make sure that it's fully drained. And even in some cases, when they appear or look fully drained, they're not. So you want to let them sit for a while and then do it again. One of the ways folks do that is to short a, um, a large resistor across the terminals. Or there's a couple of different things that you can do. Um, I have not done that, so we're, we're, we're living dangerously, but don't be like ape. Um, <clears throat> let's just talk a little bit about this and what we're looking at. So uh, we talked about the power cord potentially uh, needing to be replaced. It seems like it works now, but uh, you would just take this grommet out and rerun a new cord in here or, or replace the end like we talked about if necessary. I'm going to roll in a picture right now. Um, the soldering that's coming off of this does not look good. Um, it, it looks like I did it <laughs> versus happening in a factory. But I suspect it's still all the original soldering. But what we have is, is that our power comes in here and then immediately goes into this large transformer here. And um, maybe I can tilt this up on its side so you guys can get a better look at the uh, at the transformer there. And you can also see some of the soldering that we have here just not looking good. But uh, this all looks like the original transformer. And this is old. Um, I guess that's a protection MOV. It might just be a capacitor. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to uh, check the schematic on this. Um, oh, I did want to say I called Astron and I talked to them and this was made in 1996, in July of 1996. Um, when the, the juice comes in and it gets transformed from 110 voltages down to something that's a little bit more manageable and I believe it's somewhere around 30 volts. I did not test or check, but you can see from these wires that these are older wires. They come out of the transformer and then they go into this rectification circuit down here where you can see these little squares that are on there. Um, there's two of them. And one of the cool things about Astron is, is that if you have any problems with this, you can go to their website and just order replacement parts. I'd hate to have to replace those uh, rectifiers, but it's possible if necessary. And then from the rectifiers, the power comes out and it goes into this cap. And that is to kind of smooth out our signal. So you, you have to remember we're getting AC power, which is a sinusoidal wave that's coming in here and we're converting it to DC. DC is a flat line. There's no amplitude to it because it's DC current, not AC current. When it comes out of this capacitor, it goes into this regulator board. Uh, and this board is mounted upside down. And the only way that it's mounted is through these screws that go into this capacitor. Uh, there's a transistor and a heat sink on here. One of the modifications I've seen is folks replace this heat sink. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit and we can take a look at this board. The board itself doesn't look too bad. But I think that you can see that uh, there are some markings, there's some tarnish, there's some wear on here. And it does look like somebody was working around in here and scraped off some of this copper to get better contacts. I'm not 100% sure. And it also looks like we had some heating issue right here at this one cable that comes in. But uh, that's what we're looking at so far from the regulator board. 
the power comes out and goes into these transistors. And uh, you can see each one of these transistors has these white resistors on here. And what those resistors do is they balance the power to make sure that none of these transistors are working any harder than the other ones. And the last thing we're going to take a look at is, is that there are some variable potentiometers there. Um, you can see 1K here, and this one's 20K. And you can use these to calibrate or adjust the meters on the front. <clears throat> these are analog meters. I'm not, I want to be in the ballpark. I don't need to be precise. I doubt that I'm going to do anything with those. But uh, in taking a look at this, I'm not seeing anything that looks like it's been modified. It may have, and I just don't know what I'm looking at. The only thing I would really see is it does look like this is not a factory job here. But uh, again, that doesn't seem like it's such a big deal. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy so far. I was expecting to potentially see a nightmare or this thing be full of bugs or something like that. And it's uh, relatively clean. We'll have to clean it up a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, that said, I'm going to put this thing back together and then we're going to do some testing on it. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about rectification in that stage and a little bit about the difference between a good uh, quality power supply and cheaper, less quality power supplies. This is a linear power supply, and while they're not as efficient as switching power supplies, they produce a much cleaner and stable signal than the switching power supplies and generally are preferred. One of the drawbacks is, besides the weight, these things are huge and heavy, is that they are more expensive. They're significantly more expensive. It's a lot cheaper to build a switching power supply, and that's why you see them in use so often. Now, some folks might come on here and say, well, hey, my switching power supply has good filtering and all that. I'm sure it does. But um, this does have filtering in it, but it's less necessary than it is with switching power supply. But on to the rectification. Um, let me just draw a typical sine wave, and that looks something like this. And that is your AC current that's coming out of your wall socket and going into the power supply. When we had this open, we took a look at the rectification stage in that. And this first one is a half wave, and this is a full wave wave. And so what you see here is that your average is lower on the half wave rectification. And then when your capacitors charge, your output signal looks something like this. Right, then it comes back up and your capacitor fills back up and then it comes back down and you end up with this more of a sawtooth looking signal that needs to be filtered as your as your power uh, passes through the supply when you take a look at a full wave rectification what you have is is that your power supply you know your capacitor tops off and it comes down and then it comes back up it starts filling your capacitor up and then it starts to come back down and then you get a much flatter signal here. It makes it easier for filtering. Filtering. So when you buy one of these power supplies, you always want to make sure that you have full wave rectification in that versus half wave rectification. Ho hopefully that helps some folks out. Okay, we have the power supply hooked up and connected to our West Mountain Radio computer battery analyzer. And this is the test screen for that. And you can see up here in the upper right-hand corner, I have the battery set for power supply. And I did a detect, and here we are set at 13.8 volts, which is what we want this set to when we're, when we're using it. And it only detects one cell because there's no cells. Um, I didn't fill any of this other information out. We're going to do a power profile. And so what this does is a test that steps up in uh, power requirements at, uh, let's go to point. Two five. Oh, we went a little high there. And what we'll do is we'll go up a quarter of an amp until we get to our desired 25 amps. And we're going to hold that for 10 seconds. And it's going to do a voltage versus power test. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit start and we're going to see what happens. The test amp succeeds the <laughs> rating of the CBA. Please enter a test amps value at less than 10.84 amps. Okay, you may also use the CBA amplifier to boost the CBA's power limit. We're not going to do that, so I'm going to hit this, and we're going to drop this down to 10 amps. And that kind of sucks, because I was hoping to do something more than that. But uh, let's go ahead and start and see what we find out. Oh, test amps you specify is higher than the recommended peak for battery of this type of capacity. The recommended peak current is 5. Let's just go ahead and do it anyway. And when I turned the power supply on, it started to make a little bit of noise. 
And there we go. And we are getting a 10 second uh, reading up here. And we can see that our voltage is 13.83148. And then we can see over here, this says watts, uh, how much is being uh, being drawn. And we right now are at 0.75 of an amp. Let's let this run for a little bit and come back and take a look at the results. Okay, we had to stop the test and you can see from the results here that the test started to go a little bit wonky. I'll roll some footage in of the power supply and how it was behaving uh, under, the, under this load. But what's concerning is there's a couple of things to take a look at here. If you're using this to power your shack in maybe a radio, a tuner, a SWR power meter, a, a couple of things like that, um, you're going to draw a baseline level of current prior to transmitting. And what we started to see, you can see over here on the right hand side, is, is we, we got up to 3.305 amps and the output voltage became very unstable. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll roll it in so you can see that. And then you can see from the graph that we went from here at a um, output voltage of 13.4, which I think would still be fine, to down here. And our output voltage was somewhere around 3.4, 3.3, and then up here it was 3.6. And I let that run for a little bit, and it never really recovered. And so that's going to tell me that just under a small standard base load of three less than three and a half amps that this power supply is not working correctly. And that's a little bit of a bummer because I was hoping that I was going to be able to use this thing. And like I said, I didn't pay a lot for it, but I paid enough for it that I'm going to contact the seller and I'm going to ask for a refund. So that uh, is probably going to go ahead and wrap this video up prematurely. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond.